now we will be discussing the basic models of community organization. So this is in connection with our discussion last time regarding the definition of community organization. So as a review, community organization is a process in which the community identifies its needs or objectives and then order or prioritize what's the most important of these needs and objectives, develop that confidence and the will to work at these needs, and then find resources. In the process, it is hoped that through community organization, people would bring about the desired improvement, and that would lead to empowerment. So according to Jack Rothman, there are three basic models for community organization. The first is called locality development. So the other name for locality development is community development. It is a method of working with community groups. And the focus in here is to bring about the process of community building. That's why this would take time because you want to involve in as much as possible everyone or majority of the people if it's not possible to include all. In the process, you want to help the community plan and find solution to their problem. It will take time because we want that it is the people who will realize that they have the problem and we want to encourage them to pull their resources true enough to the definition of CO so that they can find solution to their problem. In here, we can see that the most important factor is to develop leadership. At the same time, to use education as a tool so that people will understand the essence of their participation in community building. The goal of this development of leadership, most of the time this could happen when you help identify indigenous leaders and develop your core group or your core leaders because the leadership would come from the people. It aims at meeting their needs, especially the target population, those in which their um, prioritization of needs would need more assistance or programs. And it can also include um, neighborhood development, road development, or it could also be problems like in relation to environment or sanitation. And at the same time, food security. So it depends to the community because each community is unique here. So when we say leadership as a review, it means inculcating teamwork among them because as mentioned, we want that CO becomes a method in which the unity can be promoted. Motivation, the, the fact that they have problems is actually a very good motivation for them to work together. Competence, skills, that sense of responsibility because as mentioned, one of our goals or our focus is to promote social functioning in the sense that people will not only care about providing their own needs, but we want them to care as well about the needs of the community. So our enemy in here is apathy. When we say apathy, people are indifferent or they don't care about what's happening. So kung wala labot ang mga tao, sa gakatabo sa ilang mga palibot, Community building will not really happen. Then we have communication, which is very important. And it's a core um, skill that must be done in order to achieve the goal of leadership. And towards helping the people discover their power. That's the goal, to promote empowerment. People will feel that they have the capacity that it's not all the time that they will be helped but they can also help that they are actually primary movers for development of the country and at the same time we allow people to feel that they have support 
from the external and of course that they can be each other's support system. So that's leadership. In relation to education, we see that for community development, education is not just about preparing them for life or giving them the access to be educated formally, but we also include adult education or community education. When we say adult education, we refer to the popular concept of education. So everyone can relate because they feel that they are really part of the process, that they can do something. So the process of educating is life itself. That people will feel that they should be aware about what's happening around them and that they can do something to provide solutions for their community. And at the same time, through education, they will also be able to contribute more for the solutions so the basic belief in here is that communities have some common needs and interests that's why they are part of the community being part of that community geographically of course would allow you to at least have to at least have some common identity and that can also um, include having common needs because of your location let's say you are a um, fishing village or you are in a uh, community that is um, near the shore so because of that you can have common needs and at the same time interests but of course we do not uh, say that everyone will think in the same way because it's quite dangerous for people to be asked to think in the same manner so that's not the goal of community development although we want them to work together but it doesn't mean that we don't want them to be critical so we encourage people to think outside of the box to um, be comfortable to be different because that could also be part of the solution if they believe um, in the different way of doing things so as long as they do it with respect and that the framework is not really to um, shine above others but to contribute to the solution of the community problem so that is still a good um, tool in community building so once the people realize that they have the need and that they can actually work together democratically meaning uh, the kind of leadership that we promote in here is to give everyone the opportunity to share their thoughts and to grow that it is not just one person who would lead them but the power really comes from the people so they can then take appropriate steps to improve the quality of life and this will take time. That's why among the basic models of CO, it is the community development or locality development that would require a lot of time for the goals to be achieved. So the second model is social planning. When we say social planning, it is a method of working with a large population. And it refers to the type of community work where a worker or agency undertakes an exercise of evaluating their welfare needs and the existing services in the area specifically in planning in coming up with that blueprint the goal is to have more efficient delivery of services to the social problem so when do we usually apply social planning we apply this when there is a need to think of the solution as fast as the community can when the um, resources is not enough so that it can't be subjected to the long process but the solution is already required so the key in here is you ask experts or people to be with you to help you come up with a good plan considering 
um, factors like what it is that people actually need. So instead of asking people to do the entire process, the social worker would come in and help them come up with a plan. It is also a responsive model to the needs and attitudes of community like in housing, health insurance, affordable education in which we require the expertise of people who knows how to plan well in relation to these um, needs and at the same time services because this would require thorough understanding of the situation and to have a very good theoretical framework for you to come up with this program. So although we believe in the power of the people to decide themselves, we know that for most of the services, the planning would also require um, help from technical experts so that the resources will be um, utilized in the most effective and efficient manner. So the community planner works in greater capacity with the government. So this is being uh, the kind of model that is being used by the government. Like for instance, the DSWD the because they provide technical support. At the same time, um, they have pool of people who are experts in their uh, fields. And at the same time, in different programs and services. So they hire people who knows how to plan well and who have knowledge in these different um, services and programs. So that's why um, there's a need for the worker as well to identify with the power structure of the community. But it's important that you do this social planning with the primary goal of helping people um, address their needs and at the same time to develop them uh, in them the attitude of caring and the importance of their participation and collaboration because after all no matter how beautiful the plan the community planner social worker or the technical team would come up if the people will not participate if they will not do their share then the implementation will most likely still not be uh, not go as expected so there's still a need to inculcate positive values among community, especially in terms of their participation or self-determination. And the last model, according to Jack Rothman, is social action. So we use this kind of strategy when there are groups or sub-communities or sometimes even national organizations that feel that they have inadequate power and resources to meet their needs so they confront such with power structure and they use conflict as a method to solve their issues related to inequalities and deprivation so later on we will in our next lesson we will be discussing the critical social work and why is it there's a need for us to be involved in advocacy work in relation to dealing with the power structure so examples in here are structural systems change because it is already the entire system that needs to be changed because you realize that um, no matter how you empower the people on the individual or in the meso or group basis if the systems would still um, have that effect of altering or stopping people from becoming or from reaching their fullest potential, then the most of the times the goal will not be achieved in terms of its sustainability and impact because the system already has a problem on its own. That's why if you want to create greater impact, there's a need somehow to work on in terms of changing the system. So that would bring the disparity between people of different socioeconomic conditions in terms of their social rights, um, educational policies, employment policies, in, um, among the other um, issues in which there's inequality or there are those who are marginalized. So that would bring at least some disparity into solution.
So there's a need for us to be involved in this um, structural systems change. So the basic models that we have just discussed a while ago are um, locality development or community development. But in its emerging model, some would call it a civic organizing because you tap people to create their organization. So that's why we have civil society. Then we have social planning and we also have um, social action or power based. So, in our emerging models, we have uh, the social action in terms of transformative, which is more on radical change and critical thinking and symbolic action. Then we also have separate community building. This is aside the locality development because this includes more of developing legitimacy, building assets to the community. Then in the emerging models, we also have the women-centered or the feminist approach in which the theory of change is helping link the private women and family and public issues. At the same time, we also have the consensus building because there's a need for building relationships and partnerships based on mutual self-interest. So in this table, we can see the four categories that would differentiate one from the other and that would include the kind of theory of change or goals that they have the organizing change strategy the tactics and techniques and the leadership and governance so although we're trying to differentiate one from the other most of the times the skills needed the tactics the techniques the kind of leadership would call for um interrelation or overlapping approaches because in reality or in practice it's important to not just apply one model or not just um, fully embrace one theory because remember that most of these theories were created before but it's important to continually adapt with a changing um, social climate in terms of what we really need what is the uh, reality in the present so but then it's important to just be familiar because these are foundations so specifically um it's good to look at the theory of change like for social action which is power based and social action which is transformative so their main difference is for social action that is power based the focus is on shifting power and building that um, representative interest or group but for a social action that transform it is to radically restructure the power so there's a need to redistribute the power towards developing broad base of movement for social change so this is where we see most of the um, protest critical thinking and popular education and for locality development geared towards civic organizing we want to restore the social order because we usually utilize this um kind of model when there is already a lot of problems and there's a need to gain social integration or to call for the participation of everyone towards helping them create their forum or their um means of creating social control so for most communities nga grabe ila problem let's say um they are already a depressed community so it's important to help the people um feel that they can still be in control because most of the times ang mga amo nga community damo damo like let's say in government intervention or ngo so it could later on develop sense of uh, dependency which we do not want but we want them to feel that they have still that sense of control and for social planning we want to develop experts to help us provide solutions to the problem so the change strategy is to help them solve substantive social economic problems and we do a lot of research in here by gathering data about the problems and developing solutions towards that formal creation of formal organizations but not necessarily with the residents 
So we also aim to build the community, to strengthen that social fabric in connection to the outside resources and to develop that legitimacy for um, building assets. So the, the tactics in here is to build um, community with comprehensive plans, programs, discussion, and of course, dialogue, which we know is also applied in the other type of model because it's impossible to just simply plan on your own. It would be good to conduct dialogue. And for the feminist approach, it's about promoting that shared leadership, decision-making, responsibility, and mutual support, which is still applicable in other models. And lastly, for building consensus, it's important that the leadership is community-run, and this can also be applied in locality development because we want to help them um, organize among themselves, which is the ultimate um, goal in CO, hope towards empowerment. So we organize power structure as partner, that it is seen not as the enemy or the problem, but it can be used as a partner so that the mutual self-interest among the, the concerns of the different groups can be achieved. So when we say consensus, um, people are encouraged to arrive at a common um, goal or agreement. So lastly, um, allow me to share this quote from one of my favorite authors, Leo Buscaglia. So he said, change is the end result of all true learning. So if we have really learned, it's important that we change something. So it could be our way of thinking or our practice. And what we are pushing for is that through learning, we can create positive change that will not only benefit ourselves. In your case, that your diploma later on when you graduate will not only benefit yourself, but it can be used by the community that your education will have impact and essence to the lives of other people because after all that's the ultimate direction or purpose of why is it you, we are continuously learning so thank you so much for listening up to this point and have a great day everyone